Let's say you're pretending to be a sommelier. Let's pretend you're a sommelier. 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 Is that okay? Let's say you're at home alone at night pretending to be a sommelier. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 40 years. These are the gadgets I'm going to test. The Wines is amazingly simple wine opener. Manual rotating corkscrew wine opener. Barcraft stainless steel lazy fish corkscrew. Monopole Asso Cork Puller. Coravin Model 1. The wine is amazingly simple wine opener. Its purpose in life is to get that cork out of the bottle. Let's see how effective it is. So, needle goes through the cork, push it all the way in, and start zizzing. Wow, that worked pretty quickly. Is that three pumps, four pumps? Popped right out, made a sound like something's happening. This piece of plastic ejects the cork. Looks like we're good to go. Start early. Let's say you're home alone at night, just drinking by yourself, pretending to be a sommelier. Let's see how it compares to a standard corkscrew. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I would give it a five. This really popped that cork a lot quicker than I expected. And that's always a good thing. If you expect something to work in a certain way and it actually works better than that, you're exceeding expectations. That is a good thing to do design-wise. Let's try using the wine ziz with the left-handed oil test, a trick that I use to very quickly assess the usability of a product. And what that means is I'm right-handed, I'm gonna oil up my left hand, make it really slippery, and... I'll try to defoil the bottle. It's rather painless. Now let's see if I can inject the needle. Start pumping, one, two, three, four, whoa, and it's out. It takes a little bit of pressure to pump this up and down. And I do notice that since this is a perfect cylinder, there's nothing really to keep my hands from just slipping up and down, especially oil like this. In terms of usability, I would put this down to a three. And the reason I'm gonna do that, it's a little bit of punishment for the fact that this could have been so easily resolved to make this easier to use with less squeezing involved. Not everyone can do that. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a solid three for usability. Here are a few simple things I would do to improve the wines is. Because you simply just pump this up and down, this could use a contour, and that means either give it a little bit of belly or concave. I'm gonna give it a belly and a little arch at the top. Giving it even just a little bit of contour will hold it more securely in your hand. You'll have to squeeze less. Since your first step is to push the needle in, I would round the tops uh, a bit so you don't have quite as sharp an edge to the cylinder. I think one other thing I would do, notice how the ziz wants the roll either up top or down below, I would give this a flat. Just prevent it from going right off the table. Simple modifications that the design team could have done could have resulted in you zizzing more effectively. For a buy rating, let's give it a four and a half. Design changes that would have made it that much more usable would have been really minor and could have been considered. I would give it to somebody who needs to open that wine quickly and I would give it to people who I would visit so that I can share the wine with them because I think this can decork a bottle of wine in record time. The manual rotating corkscrew wine bottle opener. First thing that comes to mind when you take a look at this is it's got this ancient or antique look and feel to it. Boy, I wanna try it. I would use the tip of the corkscrew to break the foil. And let's see if I can do that without cutting my finger. Place it on the cork, start screwing. Let me get it down a bit. That's probably enough and start turning the handle. I feel the cork had a little bit of resistance to get started, but after that, it came out relatively easily. Tastes like the last one. It takes a little bit of force to get it in and to start turning the, the crank to pull the cork up. It does have its, uh, boy, its fun aspect to it. The showiness of some of these wine openers is nice to have, and I think this has it. I have a feeling that if 
I was in a party situation and I had this corkscrew. I think people would gather around to watch me do it or say, hey, let me try that. Let's see how that compares with a standard waiter's corkscrew. In terms of effectiveness, I would give it a four, let's go three and a half because uh, you do need to work a little bit to get the cork back off of here. But yeah, let's go three and a half, maybe a four, three and a half. My final answer, three and a half. Let's try this with the left hand oil test. So, slime myself up, see how easy or difficult it's gonna to be to get the foil off. And this is not easy at all. Not only is my left hand slipping, but my right hand is slipping because I want to spin the bottle. Spin the bottle, remember that? No, I'm not cooperating left-handed. Let's see if I can persuade it. Really, you need both hands to operate this, but I'm going to try it this way. I will spin with my left hand. It takes a couple of turns. It's not difficult. The shape of this handle is actually pretty good because you can really nest your fingers into these concave areas and spin. It's a pretty classic looking faucet like shape. As we get down into it, you can see that my bottle is actually spinning in my right hands, but that's no fault of the wine opener. And I'm going to do the spinning with my left hands. So let's see if I can get this to move. Well, cork is stuck in there. It takes a little bit to get it started. Once it loosens, it's not too bad. And we are out. Getting this off is going to be impossible. I can tell because I'm just going to continually slip on the cork itself. Let's see if I can drink with my left hands. Oh, yeah, that works just as well. In terms of usability, I'd give this a three and a half only because it may take some work to remove the cork from the opener. Let's think about how I would redesign to improve the wine opener. You know, aesthetically, this thing has its ancient Victorian plumbing fixture charm. I did notice something, though, is that this handle is wider than this handle. If this handle was longer, it would be a little bit easier to turn to get a little more leverage on it. So if you look at the size difference, we're here as opposed to here. I think I would have used the same size for both handles, giving a little more leverage to this side, especially since that cork has a little bit of resistance. For a buy rating, I would give this a four, even though I rate it a little bit lower in usability. It's got a bit of a fun aspect to it. It's got a curiosity aspect to it. I would give this to someone in a mansion. The Barcraft Stainless Steel Lazy Fish Corkscrew. Its purpose in life is to Get corks out of wine bottles. Let's see if I can use this edge to remove the foil. I am feeling, oh, I am feeling optimistic and excited about drinking with the lazy fish. Let's give it a shot. Position, Ooh, let's start spinning. It's a little unstable doing this, but not bad. Not loving the angles on here because I'm pushing my fingers against these points. Not that there's a whole lot of pressure, but it seems like something that could have been avoided. Get the fish's mouth all the way down into the bottle. Let's see if the fish wants a sip. Okay. Should call it the drunken fish, not the lazy fish. Ready to pull? And that's coming. Well, that's coming up pretty easily. The mechanical advantage of this, and actually any of the wine openers, is the ratio of the movement of the cork to the movement of your hand. Just take a look at how much the cork is moving and how far my hand is moving. I would say this is about a four to one ratio. So whatever power you need to remove the cork, it would be one fourth of that to pull this out. It's kind of fun to use. If you pull this out in the middle of a party, I think other people are gonna to wanna to try it. What that means is you can open more wine, which means you can drink more wine. The cork still has to come out and um, I really can't get a really good grip on the cork because the fish's mouth is in the way. So I'm gonna to have to squeeze and spin and we are good to go there. That's a little bit of a salt water taste. Say you don't have any lazy fishes in your kitchen. Let's see how it compares. I would give this a four and a half. It actually wasn't that hard to pull the cork out and it has its a uh, little bit of a ceremony to it. I like it, I'll give it a four and a half. Let's torture test the lazy fish by trying the left-handed oil test. And step one is get that foil out. I feel like I'm gonna start cutting myself up. 
Not working easily. Hold on. Whoop. All right, I got it. That was really a combination of both hands to do that. Let's see how it goes. Stabilize this. It's much easier to spin the bottle than it is to spin the fish. So I'm into the cork. I'm going to pull up with my left hand. It is a little stuck, but again, once you kind of break that initial stickiness of the cork, it comes up okay. I don't think there's any hope of getting the cork out unless I use my teeth. Well, I could try my teeth. Let me use my left teeth. I don't really recommend that. Still a little salty. In terms of usability, I kind of like it. It's very showy looking when you do it. I would give this a three and a half. Let's look at ways that I would uh, try to improve the lazy fish. Mechanism wise, I think it's okay. What I would do though is get rid of these points. These, these just don't feel right and just a little sharper than they should be. So I would keep the spirit of the tail fin intact, but make sure there's a pretty generous radius here. The other thing I would do as you're lifting this up, really not a good place to put your fingers. I mean, you kind of improvise and put them on top of this hinge point. There is a black button really a hinge on the side here. If possible, I would think about making that concave or making it directional so that your fingers can sit inside here. That would give you something uh, a little more secure to grab onto. Everything else I think is what it is. You don't want to interfere with the mechanism or the uh, curiosity aspects of people wondering what is that and how does that work. In terms of a buy rating, I would give this a five. I just think it's too much fun. We're going to need a bigger bottle. The Monopole Asso Cork Puller. It is designed to remove a cork, believe it or not. Let's see if I can use the same tool to get the foil off. Not that much fun, but in a pinch, you can use it. And the prongs go into the cork. Boy, there's something about this that just seems a little too crude, but let's give it a shot. Do a bit of a wiggle to see if I can get this thing down into the bottle. And actually, if I rock it back and forth, it's going a little easier. So it's not a good way to hold it to do that though, I gotta say. Give it a spin to see if that buys me anything. And I'm gonna start to pull up. And it is coming out. Of course, there's zero mechanical advantage. Whatever it takes to get the cork straight out is the same amount of force that you are pulling. Although it is working. And not much effort to get the uh, cork back out. If I spoke too soon, it is stuck on there pretty well. We're out. Okay, that took a little bit of work, but I'll just reward myself with this. Let's see how that compares to a basic weighted corkscrew. I wasn't that optimistic. It looks just so basic and crude. That being said, it wasn't that easy. It did take a while and it was a little bit of pain pushing that in. This handle isn't quite designed for that rocking action. In terms of effectiveness, I would rate this a three because it takes a lot of work to get that cork out. So let's try this again with a slippery left hand. So oil up both hands, remove that. And let's see if I can get the foil off. It's good to know how it works in a pinch if you don't have a foil cutter. Let's insert the long prong. I'm gonna rock it back and forth because that seems to be the way to get the prongs in there deep. It's not really designed to press down. I guess it's designed to be flat, but that's not helping us in terms of uh, usability or ease of use. Boy, this doesn't even want to rock with my left slippery hand. Now I am not getting any further down unless I really struggle. And I can see right now that this is gonna be impossible to spin because I also oiled up my right hand. That is not gonna work. So I dried off my right hand a bit and I am spinning, but boy, it's not that easy to pull up. There's nothing really about the design of this that is conducive to lifting, but it is coming out. So that took a bit of effort. 
The cork is on there pretty tightly, but I could pry it off. And I guess after that effort, we're good to go. In terms of usability, I would give this a one. It may have advantages for a broken cork because you can get around the cork. You wouldn't depend on a corkscrew getting into the center of the cork. But boy, I don't think this would be anybody's first choice. Okay, let's think of ways to redesign this to make it a bit more usable. First of all, pulling this off, I don't know if you can see these grooves here, but they're going in line with the shield in parallel with the direction that you're pulling this off. If anything at all, you'd want the groove lines to go this way. It's just going to have a slight, slight, slight effect. So it's not an amazing improvement. But at the very least, if we're going to have groove lines, they should probably be horizontal. Better than that would be to give this some sort of shape so that as you are pulling it off, you got something to pull against. If not possible, then I would at the very least exaggerate these grooves so that you have something to pull against. There's Nothing about this shape that wants to encourage the twist. So, looks like that, which means your finger is here and here, trying to pull it that way or that way. Same thing on the other side. So I think we really need some width here. So I would actually fill in this segment so that all this is solid and probably curve it in a way that you can push against it. So maybe give it a concave shape here on the outside. So you have something to push against. Maybe even a concave shape in this direction if we're gonna do this, so that there's something to push and twist against. If we're gonna spin this, we wanna design this side and this side to accept your fingers and to give more surface area to push against. And the same thing with pulling this up. Perspective here, I think this wants to be a concave finger shape. Thumb moves against that. I think this wants to be actually a little bit taller. I also think this wants to be wider. And this is now the top edge of this. The bottom edge would follow suit. So we have some width, some surface area to pull against when we pull up. And this makes this device a little bit bigger, but for this given device, I think it would be well worth the effort put into it to make this more usable. In terms of a buy rating, boy, I would give this a one because really I think it's gonna sit in the drawer unused and the opportunity to make this a lot more usable is really obvious. If I was gonna give this to someone as a present, it would be someone who I think is kind of large and big and strong and just wants to show how powerful he or she is. The Coravin Model 1. The advantage of the Coravin is that you don't remove the cork. It is a CO2 cartridge loaded wine opener. The needle goes through the cork, it pressurizes the bottle, so you can drink bits at a time and you are technically not really removing the cork. Let's say you're alone and you feel like doing a wine tasting. Let's see how effective it is. First up, I'm going to unscrew the base so that I can insert the cartridge. And I've got a Coravin cartridge here, and it turns to a point where it doesn't turn anymore. It's lined up. This needle guard, I'm going to take off. Boy, I wonder if I should try to go right through the foil. Let's do that. I'm not even going to remove the foil. So, needle into the bottle. I think I'm good to go. Let's try the next step. Whoa. Not great though. Not what I expected. So I wonder if I did something wrong here. Oops, that didn't work well. The way to use this correctly is lift this up first so the needle is in position to do the injection. Place it around the bottle. Now you don't want to squeeze this again even though there's a cue here like you want to squeeze it. It probably makes more sense to hold this tight against the bottle and push this in and then we should be good to go. You don't want to squeeze this and tilt it because this is going to release the bottle and it's just going to bend the needle. Probably design-wise, this may be setting you up for failure, but I am going to avoid doing that. I'm going to tilt this, see if I can pour. It seems to be working. So the bottle needs to be inverted and it's taking quite a bit longer than it would if you're simply just pouring the wine. 
I'm getting a little impatient to drink it. Boy, it's really hard to tell. It could be slightly aerated in doing that. Maybe it's my imagination. You know the drill. Let's see how it compares. For effectiveness, the best I can give it at this point is a four out of five. I'm not quite sure how effective it is having a hole, even a tiny hole, in the cork of the bottle. So let's try this again with a slippery left hand, my non-dominant hands. Let's pull this back into position. Place it on the bottle. And it didn't take much force before to press this down into the cork. So I'm gonna say left-handed, you're okay there. Boy, again, the tendency for me to want to squeeze these blue handles is just huge. If I do this and press those blue handles, this bottle is just gonna swing out and totally bend the needle. How do I know that? Because I did it once already. So I'm gonna tilt it with my right hands and I'm going to press the button with my left hands. It's pretty awkward. If you look at my right hand and left hand, you know, they're both in the air. Elbow is up because I have to tilt this. It's just not feeling that good and it's taking longer than it should. Let me try the other way around. If I hold my left hand and Again, sometimes if you want to look at body positions, just look at the elbow. And elbow up in the air like this just means your body is straining. I'm not sure you need a glass. Mm. Mm. That worked well. I think it may have some advantages in terms of preserving the wine, but it could be designed to be a little more intuitive, a little more self-explanatory, and not as misleading. In terms of usability, I would give this a two. I just think that some missed opportunities is just gonna be a lot more natural for someone to grab this and try this and bend that needle. Let's think about a redesign. What would I do to improve this? The reason this mechanism exists is to grab the neck of the bottle and put it in position so that when the needle comes down, it's centered. But boy, I don't think that makes sense. So let me remove this so we can talk about a redesign. There's a hole here. And very specially, we got this thing with these very noticeable blue wings here. What I would do is decrease the size of this significantly. I would make this just a tiny pinch area so that all you need to do to get this on the bottle is to pinch here. That allows you to hold this or that or the bottle or the white part. It doesn't cue you to squeeze these things because squeezing these is gonna release the bottle. You'll have a bottle on the, on the table and a bent needle. So I would radically redesign that part of it. I would also, this seam, is so tight that it gives no indication that this really wants to release. So I would look at ways to make it more obvious that these are two separate pieces. These are not actually permanently joined. Maybe in the design of this scene to make these parts look obviously separate. I have to experiment a little bit with how to make that communicate. Potentially you can do that with the shape here. In terms of buy rating, I would give this maybe a three and a half because I think you're going to waste a couple of bottles and not be very happy. I don't think it's going to give you a very good first impression. I would really question whether or not you want to spend this much money on a wine opener that may or may not have enough usage to make it worthwhile. I think the design could be better. Okay, well, obviously, if people would stop putting corks in the bottle, we wouldn't have this problem at all. I was actually surprised in starting this that there are so many different ways to get a cork out of a bottle. And I was actually pleasantly surprised at a few of these. One is the lazy fish and two is the wineses. So if you want to drink with the fishes or if you want to ziz your wine, I would say go with those two first. And cheers.